And how is it that you got notified to return to the location? I was requested to respond to 875 South Bundy by telephone. Uh, Lieutenant, or Detective Lang called me. Approximately what time did you arrive at Bundy on the state? What did you see when you arrived? I saw brown colored stains on the rear gate. And on the rear gate, are you talking about what on this diagram, People's 165, has been labeled the back gate? Yes, right here. Okay. Approximately what time did you collect those stains? collected them at approximately 1.45 in the afternoon. Okay. Now, directing your attention back to the diagram 165 for identification, item number 50 has a card in it, photo number 115, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And item number 115 and 116 also contains a card with a number 115, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so, so there are two 115s. Yes. One 115 is from uh, the 13th and the other from July the 3rd? Yes. Okay. Now, did you have occasion, Mr. Fung, to take a look at some photographs that were shot on June the 13th? Uh, prior to testifying here today. Yes. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to mark as People's 166 for identification. All right, 166. What appears to be a <coughs> photograph of the rear gate, and I'll place a 166 on the reverse side of that. All right. Perhaps we could have, it's uh, Oh. Yeah. Let's talk to Roger Cossack, our legal analyst here in Los Angeles. Roger, this is the first time the jury has seen certain pieces of evidence, specifically the glove found at Rockingham the photo of the uh, shoe print, very slow and methodical. And do you think the prosecution is trying to demonstrate that uh, even though the defense is talking about slipshod operation of the police, that uh, they're actually doing things in a slow, meticulous fashion? Well, I think that's exactly what they're trying to do by the board and by the presentation of criminalist Fung, who is appearing and seems to be a very competent and uh, able young scientist. Greta Van Susteren in our Washington studios. What's your take so far of this presentation of some of the physical evidence and the collection of the evidence as described by Dennis Fung? Well, obviously the prosecutor is doing sort of a textbook approach to presentation, and Mr. Fung is doing a good job in presenting it. But they've gone through this drill many times before. This is not unusual. Mr. Fung has testified in other cases in very similar fashion. The more interesting aspect will be how will he hold up under cross-examination, and that we have yet to see. Well, Greta, isn't this the first time that the jurors have actually seen in board form, a graphic form, of the various locations where the prosecution claims that there is, for example, a blood trail at Rockingham and identifying the specific areas where there are footprints or shoe prints and blood drops at Bundy? Oh, it is the first time they're seen, and of course this does have the prosecution sort of closing in on the defense. But of course this is the way you would expect the evidence to go in, and this is what the prosecution has to do to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. They have to show how it is that this blood, where the blood is located, to show how it's consistent with their theory of what happened and their theory that O.J. Simpson committed the crime. Now, outside the presence of the jurors, prior to criminalist Dennis Fung taking the stand in this afternoon's session, Defense Attorney Gerald Yulman discussed how far the uh, 
defense should be allowed to go in cross-examining one of the expert witnesses for the prosecution, Dr. Irwin Golden. Let's listen to this. There are essentially two items of evidence in question here. First, on July 21st, 1994, 13 days after he got off of the witness stand uh, in the preliminary hearing of this matter, uh, Dr. Golden uh, was seen displaying a firearm on the premises of the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office and was heard to remark, you know, we ought to go out and kill nine or ten of those attorneys. Uh, the other item relates to the fact that, uh, and it's, it's conceded, uh, on two prior autopsies, uh, Dr. Golden made serious errors in examining the character of wounds. In one case, uh, mischaracterizing entry wounds and exit wounds uh, uh, completely backwards. Uh, and in the other case, uh, uh, indicating that a shot was fired from several feet away when in fact it was a, a contact wound. Now with respect to all of this evidence, what we're talking about uh, is the weight and the credibility that the jury is going to give to the testimony of Dr. Golden uh, with respect to some very key issues in this case, including the time of death, uh, including the nature of the wounds, uh, whether the wounds indicate uh, uh, that they uh, were, were made by two different weapons, uh, as Dr. Golden indicated in his preliminary uh, testimony. Uh, and when ultimately, what, what we were just treated to really was, was akin to what we're going to hear in, in closing argument. Roger Cossack, this seems to be a classic case of live by the sword, die by the sword. The defense wants to cross-examine Dr. Irwin Golden with respect to certain items outside the evidence itself. And yet uh, they don't want the prosecution to question their doctor, Kerry Mullis, with respect to uh, allegedly taking LSD. Uh, it was a very interesting argument that uh, the district attorney, Brian Kahlberg, had to make because the first thing he had to do was come in and distance himself from his colleague, uh, Rockney Harmon, who uh, we heard Friday in what I thought was a particularly mean-spirited argument that uh, he wanted to uh, believe believed all scientists uh, uh, are open and fair game for what they do in their personal lives as it might affect their theories, which uh, doesn't seem to make much sense, to me at least. And so he had to come in and distance himself from that argument. The first thing he said was, uh, it's clear that I didn't write my brief uh, and talk to Mr. Harmon, and apparently Mr. Harmon didn't talk to me. They are, they are stuck on opposite sides of that issue, and I am sure the district attorney's office was not pleased when it had to have one of their own come in and say, well, sorry, I just disagree with one of my colleagues. Now, the attorneys remain at sidebar conference with Judge Lance Ito. We're going to take a short break and be back with more of the testimony of criminalist Dennis Fung right after this. These television commercials convinced my mom, my sister, and me not to join MCI savings programs. Then we heard about MCI's new friends and family, and we decided to try it. So we joined together. Now, when we spend just $10 a month, we save 50% on all the calls we make to each other. That's half of what we used to pay on AT&T's basic rate for the same call. And now we realize that all the time AT&T was telling us not to join MCI, they were charging us America's highest long-distance rate. Depend on us when you need to be rescued. But AAA is also there when you want to be reacquainted, rocketed, cascaded, paraded, astonished, and completely enchanted. Because AAA members get exclusive Walt Disney World travel benefits, special savings packages, even a free Disney vacation planning video. For information on the packages, free vacation video, or AAA membership, call 1-800-222-8411. Travel with someone you trust. AAA. 
I love working in the theater. And despite the arthritis that runs in my family, I plan to keep right on working. The Arthritis Foundation is working, too, to find a cure. But until they do, they've helped to create new Arthritis Foundation pain relievers. For pain relief, we can count on from nighttime discomfort to the pain of inflammation. And part of our purchase price goes to research. So we're helping others as we help ourselves. New Arthritis Foundation pain relievers. For relief you can count on until we find a cure. Nowadays, people have to depend on their cars more than ever, and it's my job at Cadillac to make sure you can. That's one of the reasons the new DeVille Concours impressed so many people. Our North Star system made this DeVille one of the first cars ever to go 100,000 miles between scheduled tune-ups. You see, there is a car company creating these higher standards. Because it values your time almost as much as you do, that's my company, Cadillac. Actresses finally getting their share of the big bucks in Hollywood. Find out on Showbiz Today, 10.30 Eastern on CNN. At what point did golf become more than a game for you? Was it your first set of clubs? Or the first drive that went and went and went right where you aimed. The turning point is different for each of us, but we share the same basic experience. Many of us also share another kind of experience, PGA Tour Partners. As a PGA Tour Partner, you're entitled to a whole host of benefits, access to famous courses, and even special teaching clinics. So join a group of dedicated golfers like yourself by calling this number. Call today. Find out how much more you can get from your game. And remember, keep your head down and your eye on your dream. Crossfire Sunday, premiering 7.30 Eastern Sunday on CNN. Journalist Dennis Fung is being questioned about the stains collected off of a rear gate at 875 South Bundy. You may recall Detective Tom Lang had testified that those stains were not actually collected until July 3rd, even though he had pointed them out to the criminalist earlier. However, Dennis Fung said he does not specifically recall seeing the stain on June 13th. The photo ID 115, which corresponds to item... 50 was taken on, was done on June 13th, when, before item numbers could be assigned. Okay, that was when you were assigning photo numbers 100 through, I think you said 119, is that correct? Yes. Can, can you continue your explanation as to why the two 115s? By July the 3rd, 114 items of evidence had been booked into property division. And that was the next item number that was going to be used. And it is preferable to have the item numbers and the photo ID numbers coincide so when we get to the trial phase, the jury isn't confused. And the attorneys, too. Yes. <laughs> okay. Your Honor, perhaps I could make a uh, People's 166A of the item that was shown on the uh, court screen of 166. Part 166A, hard copy. Now, with respect to the uh, three stains that were collected on July the 3rd, did you use the same technique in terms of what happened to the stains to dry and package them that you did with the stains that were collected on the 13th? Yes. All right.
All right, now getting back to uh, June the 13th and the location of 875 South Bundy. Did any of the uh, blood drops at that location appear to be stepped in? Along the trail, no. OK, and along the trail, you mean which item numbers through which item numbers? I am referring to item numbers One twelve, or excuse me, those are photo ID numbers. Item numbers 47, 48, 49, 50, and 52. When you were out at the scene and looking at these uh, various blood dots as well as the shoe, print, shoe prints, did Detective Lang ask you to do anything in particular in terms of uh, documenting or analyzing those shoe prints and the blood dots? Yes, he did. What did he ask you to do? He asked me to <clears throat> measure and document the different shoe, shoe prints. And how did you measure the shoe prints? I placed a tape measure down and measured them um, with reference to items that are immovable within the residence. Okay, so you documented the measurements of the various footprints? Yes. Did you also document 